एवरीवन आई एम रोहिणी हरिदास वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट मौलाना मुख्तार अहमद नकवी टेक्निकल कैंपस मालेगाव टुडे इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द टाइम ग्रेडेड ओवर करंट प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ रिंग मैन सिस्टम द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज टू डिस्कस द फीचर ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन लाइन to study the method of protection for ring main system and these are the some outcomes after watching this video the learner will able to describe the method of protection of ring system and do the time grading of relay in any system to achieve the selectivity now the question is that why does the transmission lines required more protection as compared to the other equipments in the power system the reason is the length of the transmission line is more and it runs through a open atmosphere and because of this the probability of occurring of fault is much more as compared to the other equipments in the power system and thus the transmission line required more protection now let us see the features of the protection the first one is during fault the only circuit breaker closest to the fault point should be tripped the meaning is that all other circuit breakers should remain in the closed position to achieve the selectivity next one is if the circuit breaker closest to the faulty point fails to trip the circuit breaker just next to this circuit breaker will trip as a backup protection and third one is the operating time of relay associated with the protection of the line should be as minimum as possible in order to prevent the unnecessary tripping of the circuit breaker associated with other healthy parts of the system or in other words we can say in order to preserve the system stability the relay operating time should be just as short as possible here the figure shows the single line diagram of a typical ring main system in this system the various power stations or substations are interconnected by alternate routes thus forming a closed ring in case of damage to any section of the ring that section may be disconnected for the repairs and the power will be supplied from both ends of the ring thereby maintaining the continuity of the supply now let us discuss the time graded overcurrent protection applied to the ring main system in this arrangement the power can flow in both the direction under fault condition therefore it is necessary to grade in both direction around the ring and also to use the directional relay in order that only faulty section of the ring is isolated under the fault condition or in other words in order to achieve the selectivity we have to follow the certain rules the first one is the two lines leaving the generating station should be equipped with the non directional overcurrent relay in this case the relay 1 and relay 8 so let us mark this one relay number 1 equipped with the non directional overcurrent relay similarly relay number 8 this is the symbol for the overcurrent non directional relay now let us see the rule number 2 at each bus the directional relay or reverse power relay should be placed in both incoming and the outgoing lines the direction of the tripping should be away from the bus this is the symbol for the directional relay now let us assume that we are going in the clockwise direction at bus b 2 is the incoming line and therefore we should place the directional relay at 3 it is the outgoing line and therefore we should also place the directional relay same is applicable at bus c 4 is incoming 5 is outgoing at bus d 6 is incoming and 7 is the outgoing if the direction of the power flow is same as that of the direction of the relay then only the relay trips 
Now the rule number three is that there should be a relative time setting of the relay. The outgoing relays are set with the decreasing time limits. Let us assume that we are going round a loop E A B C D A and E. That is, we are moving in the clockwise direction. Please keep in mind here we have to assign the time setting to outgoing relays only. For incoming relays, do not assign anything. So let us consider we are moving in the clockwise direction. So relay number one is the outgoing relay, and therefore we will set the timing one point six second. Similarly, when we go in the clockwise direction, at bus B two is the incoming relay. So do not assign anything. But relay number three is the outgoing relay, so it should be set with the decreasing time limit. Here we are using the time delay of zero point five second, and therefore relay three should be equipped with the one point one second. Same thing is applicable at bus C. When we go in the clockwise direction, relay number four is the incoming, so do not assign anything. Relay number five is the outgoing, and therefore it should be set with the decreasing time limit, that is zero point six second. Similarly, at bus D, six is the incoming relay, so do not assign anything. Relay number seven is the outgoing relay, so it should be set with the decreasing time limit, that is zero point one second. At bus A, eight is the incoming. and so do not assign anything the outgoing relays are already set with the decreasing time limits when we move in the clockwise direction the same thing you have to do when we move in the anti clockwise direction so let us assume that going around the loop in opposite direction that is e a d c b a and e that is we are moving in the anti clockwise direction so at bus a relay number 8 is the outgoing and therefore we will assign 1.6 second when we move in the anti clockwise direction at bus d relay number 7 is the incoming and relay number 6 is the outgoing as per, per our rule we have to assign the decreasing time limits to outgoing relays only so relay number 6 should be assigned with the decreasing time limit that is 1.1 second similarly when we move in the anti clockwise direction but at bus c relay number 5 is the incoming and relay number 4 is the outgoing so relay number 4 should be set with the decreasing time limit that is 0.6 second please keep in mind here we use a time delay of 0.5 second at bus b relay 3 is incoming when we move in the anti clockwise direction and relay number 2 is the outgoing so outgoing relays should be set with the time limit and therefore we will assign 0.1 second at bus a relay number 1 is the incoming relay Let us assume that a short circuit occurs at point F1 as shown in figure. In order to ensure the selectivity, it is desired that only circuit breaker at one and two should open to clear the fault, whereas the other sections of the ring should be intact to maintain the continuity of the supply. Now let us see how does the arrangement accomplishes this job. the power will be fed to fault via two routes that is from e a f1 let root is a and second one is e d c b and f1 let this root is b here we have incorporated directional as well as non directional relays along with the time grading principle so if the direction of the flow of power is same as that of the direction of the relay then only the relay trips now see at 
bus A relay number 8. It is a non-directional relay and it has a higher time setting and therefore this relay will not operate. At bus D, relay number 7 is the directional relay. Here the direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is opposite. Therefore, relay 7 will not operate. Relay number 6, here the direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is same. But it has a higher time setting as compared to the other relays and therefore it will not operate. Similarly, at bus C, relay number 5, the direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is opposite and therefore again relay number 5 will not operate. Add bus C relay number 4. Here the direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is same but again the time setting is quite higher than the other relays and therefore relay number 4 will not also operate. Add bus B relay number 3 it is the directional relay but the direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is opposite therefore relay number 3 will not operate. Now see about the relay number 2. It is the directional relay. The direction of the relay and the direction of the power flow is in the same direction. Also it has the lowest time setting and therefore the relay number 2 will operate. And similarly relay number 1 will also operate in order to isolate the faulty pot. So in this case only relay 1 and relay 2 will operate. These are the some references. If you like this video then please share and subscribe. Thank you.